Welcome to the class on a characteristic harmonics in HVDC system. We know that HVDC system is consisting of two AC sources. This is the one AC source, this is the another AC source. This is a transformer from the AC side. This is also transformer from the AC side. Converter 1 and converter 2. Converter 1 will be converting the AC voltage into the DC voltage. After long distance, Again, this DC voltage will be converted into the AC voltage that is given to the AC grid. This converter 1 will be controlled by means of a control system as well as a con converter 2 also will be controlled by means of a control system. And desired pulses will be given to the converters 1 and 2. Here our topic is the harmonics. Harmonics will be induced into the AC side as well as the DC side due to the operation of the converter as well as a imbalance in AC voltage and in balance in AC network and also there is a change in a DC current. Effect of harmonics. Because of the harmonics, the losses in a converter, transformer and capacitor which are connected in HVDC system will be increases. The telephonic interference also will be presented because of the harmonics. So harmonics is nothing but the frequency of the AC quantity will be changes. So there is a possibility of occurring a resonance. So, due to the resonance, high voltage will be used in a HVDC system. Because of the harmonics, the control system may go to the instability majorly due to the individual pulse control technique. So, these are the different defects of a harmonics which are present in AC system as well as a DC system of a HVDC system. These harmonics are broadly classified into the two types, characteristic harmonic, non-characteristic harmonic. This characteristic harmonics will be present in AC side as well as the DC side. The non characteristic harmonics also will be presented in a AC side and the DC side. Now, how we are going to define the characteristic harmonics means these are the harmonics of order which are presented in both AC system as well as a DC side due to the converter operation. The remaining thing is ideal, nothing but a balanced supply voltage, balanced AC network. There no ripple in the DC current and the equidistance pulses is applied to the two converters. The order of the harmonics which are present in AC current is given H equal to NP plus 1 where N is nothing but 1, 2, 3, 4 where P is nothing but number of pulses present in a output voltage. H is nothing but order of the harmonics. The same manner the harmonics in DC voltage also will be presented H equal to NP where N equal to again 1, 2, 3. P is nothing but a number of pulses. If you are using a smoothing inductor in a DC side, there is a possibility of presenting the harmonics in a DC current also. That is also represented with this order. Now we are going to see the calculation of the AC harmonics. Here we have used the two converters. One converter is fed by the star to star transformer. Another converter is fed by the star to delta transformer. This converter is taking a current of IA1. This converter is taking current of IA2. The total current is nothing but IA. This is the DC link inductor. The current which is passing at this point is the ID. Nothing but DC current. Initially, we assume that for simplicity, the overlap angle we have taken as a zero. If you write the Fourier series for the current IA1, 2 root 3 by pi ID into cos omega t minus 1 by 5 cos 5 omega t plus 1 by 7 cos 7 omega t like that's one. This is the fifth harmonic, this is the seventh harmonic, this is the eleventh harmonic, this is the thirteenth harmonic. If we observe the harmonics, the harmonic frequency will be increases where the magnitude will be decreases. The same manner, if you write the Fourier series for the IA2, nothing but current which is taken by the second converter through the star delta transformer, that is IA2 equal to 2 root 3 by pi ID into cos omega t plus 5th harmonic minus 7th harmonic minus 11th harmonic plus 13th harmonic so on. Now the total current equal to sum of these two currents. If we add these two expressions, we are getting the 4 root 3 by pi id into cos omega t minus 1 by 11 cos 11 omega t plus 1 by 13 cos 13 omega t 
minus 1 by 23 cos 23 omega t so on. This is nothing but a, the maximum current. This is the fundamental current. This is the 11th harmonic component. This is the 13th harmonic component. This is 23 harmonic. This is the 25th harmonic. So on up to infinity. This value is nothing but a maximum value. RMS value of fundamental current with a overlap angle is 0. IA10 equal to 2 root 6 by pi into ID. 1 is representing the fundamental current, whereas 0 is representing the overlap angle is 0. The same manner, if you want to find out the RMS value of current with a overlap angle is 0, IH0 equal to I10 by H. Suppose if you want to find out the fifth harmonic means H becomes a 5. Similarly, 11th means H value becomes a 11, like that, so on. When the overlap angle is not 0, then the harmonic current is given by the IH equal to the current at a overlap angle is 0 into A square plus B square minus 2AB into cos of 2 alpha minus mu whole power 1 by 2 cos alpha minus cos alpha plus mu where a equal to sin of h plus 1 mu by 2 divided by h plus 1 b equal to sin of h minus 1 divided by h minus 1 mu by 2 where mu is nothing but a overlap angle we can use this expression up to the overlap angle less than the 60 degrees suppose if the overlap angle is more than the 60 degree then you have to replace this alpha and mu with the alpha dash and mu dash where alpha dash equal to alpha minus 30 degrees mu dash equal to mu plus 60 degrees this harmonic current also the function of the load current nothing but a dc link current as the dc link current is increases the order of the harmonic also will be increases here we have see how the different harmonic currents are affecting the dc link current this is the order equal to 5 as the DC link current is increases, the magnitude of the fifth harmonic also will be increases in this manner. Next, seventh harmonic. Next, eleventh harmonic. Next, thirteenth harmonic. So, from this, we can say very easily that the magnitude of the harmonic current also will be depending upon the magnitude of the DC link current. Harmonics in a DC voltage. Now, if you write the Fourier series for the DC voltage which is presented in the DC link means then VH equal to VD0 into C square plus D square minus 2CD cos of 2 alpha minus mu whole power 1 by 2 whole divided by root 2. VD0 is nothing but a DC link voltage with overlap angle is 0. Now we are going to define the C value c equal to cos of h plus 1 mu by 2 by h plus 1 where d equal to cos of h minus 1 into mu by 2 into h minus 1. So why we are writing the Fourier series for the DC voltage means when you are converting the AC voltage to DC voltage there is some amount of ripple will be presented in the DC voltage so that we can easily write the Fourier series for the DC voltage also because it is consisting a harmonics. So thank you very much for watching this video.